got better. Thank you for staying tuned. Following health concerns over table salt intake, manufacturers are beginning to refocus their marketing strategies away from health issues. Yet, this is an essential commodity in every home and widely used by most manufacturers like Nestle, Unilever, and USCN. And advertising for direct consumer markets, the producers are playing up some marketing elements such as products, fortification with iodine, and uh, pureness of the products as their unique selling point to retain or increase patronage. Interestingly, Nigeria is only a small player when it comes to global salt production. We will be looking at this commodity and its market share as the Executive Director Commercial at NASCON Allied Industries PLC Fatima Aliko Dangote will be joining us from our studios at the NSE. But first, let's see the burning economic issues. Temitop Olubile, one of the research analysts, is here with Financial Derivatives Company. Is here with me to take us through that. Thank you very much, Top Air, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, we just saw the inflation number, and that's, um, of course, Indeed. at the top of yes. your uh, burning economic yes. issues. You were focused, you, you had predicted 11.27%, and we had 11.28%, yes. still in line with your yes. focus. Now, what did you see to make that projection? Okay, so like you said, our projection was within the margin of error when it comes to the actual report. And what we, what the drivers that we saw during the review period was that we saw that there were higher diesel, there was higher diesel costs. So we have retail diesel going for as high as two sixty naira per liter, and of course that would reflect in logistics and transportation cost. And then we saw that within the month of November currency depreciated, it came under increased pressure and it depreciated to a high of 370 naira per dollar. So those factors were definitely responsible. And of course we are that was November is one month in one month into the one month from the festive season. So we have that increased demand ahead of the festive season would definitely reflecting. Now, uh, we saw that the food uh, index continues to be on the rise. Are you mm -hmm. concerned about that? Well, not really, because I think that that is just characteristic of the Christmas period. So, of course, you would see that consumers will begin to stock up ahead of the season, and that, would, that might even come out higher in December, but we don't expect it to be a trend. It's just seasonality factors that are playing into them, that food, that sub-index. Okay, now let's look at um, the commodity in focus. We're talking about um, salt. Yes. Now, why is Nigeria a fringe player in, it, in the global You know, that market? is definitely something that is very concerning about salt production in Nigeria because we have, we have the salt deposits. Salt can be gotten from deposits or from the sea water. We have the deposits. Ebony is known as the salt of the nation. So the deposits there, we have all these sea bodies. We have the lagoons. And so we can definitely, we should definitely be doing more about it. But, you know, there are constraints to even the demand away from the supply, there are constraints to the demand when you see increased consciousness, like you mentioned earlier, from consumers. So those kind of factors are definitely playing into salt. Well, interestingly, we have uh, Fatima Aliko Dangote with us. Perhaps you would have to explain some of these um, challenges mm -hmm. they face in uh, producing this um, commodity. Oh, well, we cross over now to the NSC Temple. Interestingly, um, you have Fatima there uh, with you. Perhaps Fatima would be able to give us an oversight, overview of um, salt as commodity and its market share and perhaps some of the challenges they as producers face. Thank you so much, Chimeze. Uh, of course, we, you get all of those details from Fatima as the conversation goes on. Thanks a great deal for uh, staying with us on Thank the you. show and for coming through this morning. So let's look at uh, the fact that uh, you are considering backward integration on salt by way of uh, cutting down costs of importing the raw material. Give us a sense of what your plan is on this. Yes, so our plan is um, uh, we're looking at um, other African countries where we want to explore the opportunity of um, going into backward integration for salt because we've looked into uh, Nigeria and there isn't enough deposit for commercial purposes. So we're looking at um, certain countries, uh, Namibia, Ghana and Egypt, to see if we can actually partner with the um, brownfield. But currently, where do you import from? So we import from um, Brazil, from China, 
So just all over the world, really. And that Whatever means prize you really you need get, a, that is right for us. And that means you need a whole lot of FX to do that. Yes, we do. And mm. because of the um, shortage of um, dollars, it will make a lot more sense to be able to go into backward integration, especially partnering with um, brownfields here in um, Africa. Mm. Uh, so by the time you're able to have this, I don't know what timeline you're looking at, uh, the backward integration and execution now, what difference will it bring to business? It should bring a lot of difference because it's going to cut down on our cost. We're going to be setting on uh, what our cost be and that we'll be able to predict um, a lot more on our um, profitability going forward. So it's really, really going to help the business. There must be some challenges that you also face by way of having to import uh, this raw material into the country. First port of call will be the port issues, the gridlock at a papa. Tell us more about that. Certainly. Uh, the great lock in um, APAPA has really affected us this year. So far, uh, up to the third quarter, we've lost um, over a billion naira in um, revenue, which has really impacted um, our business. But thankfully, Patakot has helped, but um, we still have lost the volume here in Lagos, which uh, I don't think we can um, make up for. But hopefully, going into next year with the road repairs going on, things are going to improve for us. Yeah, so in spite of the fact that um, salt is not available in commercial quantity, as you said, locally, uh, you still have to import from Brazil and a couple of other climes, uh, you have been using salt for a whole lot of things. One of the new uh, variants of your uh, seasoning will be, uh, I think it's the Dangote Classic. Uh, yes. What is the USP, what you call the unique selling point for that now? So the unique selling point for us for that is um, it actually has a high quality, it's a premium product. Okay. with high quality, which uh, we developed it with um, consumers' feedback. Mm. So um, we've feedback actually been... On Danq, feedback right? on Feedback on you and the seasonings that are available in the market. Okay. So we've gotten feedback on that and we actually thought, okay, let's take this opportunity to see what is there that is missing in the market. Because when you speak to uh, the consumers themselves, they tell you that sometimes they have to buy a lot of more seasonings, you know, a bit of seasonings here and there mm -hmm. to be able to give them that taste they're looking for. So we decided to uh, come up with one seasoning that will encompass all that taste that uh, consumers are looking for. And that's what the Dangote Seasoning Classic uh, comes up with at this time. You also yes, have it's called the real deal, actually. The real deal. The real deal. Oh my God. Okay. So, uh, but then you also have the Dangote curry, uh, the yes. Dangote steel mix. Uh, yes. Give us a sense of what this mean for consumers. Okay. So we actually um, said to ourselves that we need to expand our portfolio in uh, 2018 and going forward yeah. because uh, we started just salt as a business. So we looked at it to say what other products um, will be an extension of salt. So seasoning has about 50% of salt. Mm. So we decided to actually look at that. So we started with uh, Danky. Danky actually started about um, four years ago. Right. So um, we decided last year that we want to aggressively grow our market share um, in that space. So we decided to go to the market, see where the gaps are, and we decided to bring out uh, this um, new seasoning. And we looked at the curry and stew mix too available in the market. We're known for good quality. Mm. So uh, we said, let's look at uh, something that uh, will give the best quality to consumers. So that was why we came about uh, this product. But they are all an extension of salt because they all contain certain elements of salt. But you know, obtaining best quality comes with a, with, with, with a fee, and that is uh, the price now we're trying to talk about. Uh, what's the price like? Um, the price is good for the quality that we're giving, so I think it's the right price for the quality that we're giving. Okay. Uh, you also launched in the north, uh, I think it's Kano specifically. Yes. Will this be for that scope alone? So it wouldn't just be for there, but when you look at uh, the data available, you see that uh, the northern part of Nigeria consumes more seasoning more than any other part. Really? Yes, of the country, yes. In spite of the religious uh, sentiments attached to it? Uh, yes. So they consume a lot more seasoning. Okay. Yes. So um, even when you look at uh, data available by AC Nelson uh -huh. and so on, so no, the northern part consumes a lot more. And when we even did our further research, we found out that even the um, customers, distributors buying from different companies that are here in uh, the south, okay. they actually sell the products, most of the products they buy, they sell it to the north. Mm. Yeah, so we decided let's target where the main market is 
and then we we'll cascade uh, as time goes by. Mm. So, uh, but what this means is that we will have it in wholesale uh, more from the south, and then uh, you can then move it into Kano or the northern part of the country, or is it manufactured uh, in that part of the country? No, it's actually manufactured uh, here in, here in um, Lagos. No, in um, Owen State. So that's oh. where we have our factory. Mm. So we actually produce it there, and once a customer pays, then we truck it down um, to the customer. So it's open for all our customers to buy, whether you're in the north or south, it's all open for everybody. Mm. Yes. One thing on the mind of a lot of, consumer, of um, consumers, and of course viewers now, will be the price. But then, uh, by the time backward integration happens, yes. 2019 is what you're targeting. 2019 so into, 2020, 20, into 2020. 2020. Yes. So in the uh, short to medium term, by, that, by the time that happens, will the price of seasonings, maybe from Dangote specifically, come down or it will just moderate? Certainly, because we always have uh, consumers in mind. Um, so if our cost comes down, we surely bring it down just to be able to make people to be able to afford um, our seasoning. NASCON is the umbrella name, yes. and you are here, uh, quoted here. We are in the Nigerian Stock Exchange. You're quoted here. You've done so well uh, by some good percentages this year. But yesterday, the market share fell some ten percent, and uh, about ten percent, not ten percent precisely. What's the exciting news for investors to watch? The exciting news is we're investing a lot more going into next year. This year alone, in third quarter, we've launched um, three new products. Mm. We're increasing um, our capacity of salt going into next year. Mm. Our focus uh, previously has been on mainly one segment of the market, which is the bulk salt, mm. where we're looking at uh, doing more refined salt where uh, even our competitors will be our customers, the likes of Nestle, Unilever. So um, as we expand, um, we should have uh, more um, items added to our portfolio, and then that would also obviously increase our um, revenue. Mm. So I'm very optimistic about um, next year, and we're also looking at uh, introducing more uh, products. Uh, uh, and that, that means a whole lot more uh, dividends to shareholders. Oh, yes, forward. certainly. Thank you so much yes, for talking yes, to yes. us on Salt and, of course, the uh, uh, end products of it as you do at NASCON. Thanks a great deal, Fatima. Thank you. Back to you, Chimezi. Temple, a wonderful conversation there with Fatima. But um, Temitobe is still here. Um, tell me, tell me, can you really uh, have salt, uh, I mean, substitute uh, salt be a substitute for another seasoning? Okay, so I think what can be done is that s other seasonings might become, might start to be substitute for salt. So because, like I mentioned before, because of the increased consciousness, health consciousness, you might find that, you know, households may start to substitute for certain you know, food items, you know, so exactly, mm -hmm. and replacing it with some substitutes so in your stews and your soups, you can try that. But I think that salt is still, will still remain a vital household commodity. Uh, and, and of course, in the industry mm. for, mm, industry yeah, exactly, for industry players, yeah, exactly, for industry You know, do is, yeah, because it also has alternative uses. Mm -hmm. You can use it for detergents, you can use it for other things, yes. So, All right, thank you very much for your time, Tony Topper. Thank you. After the break, Experts speak on the spate of regulatory sanctions in Nigeria. Stay with us. <laughs>